Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Makers. I'm Henry. I don't have a lot of time to do this because we have another thunderstorm rolling in, so I'm going to get this done quick. What am I going to do? I'm going to make some tempura squash. Another way to use squash, besides frying it, boiling it, broiling it, turn it into bread. Tempura. This is a patty pan style squash. And it's going to be a little thick if I cut the slices the way I want to, so I'm going to cut it in half. Now I cut this squash in half across the diameter because I don't want it to be, I don't want the pieces of squash to be really thick. I have the squash all cut up and I'm ready to make the tempura batter. The tempura batter is very, very simple. I'm not going to be making a lot of tempura for lunch today, so it's a half a cup of all-purpose flour one teaspoon of cornstarch. <laughs> For those of you who are in the UK, corn flour. A fat pinch of kosher salt. Now this recipe calls for anywhere from one to one and a half times the flour volume in seltzer water. So I'm going to start with one volume, one half cup of club soda. And it's going to fizz up all over the place, but that's okay. We actually want that. going to have all kinds of foam, all kinds of froth. And when you just use a one-to-one -one measure, it's thick. I don't like it that thick, so I'm going to add some more club soda to loosen it up some more. And we prefer our tempura vegetables that have a thin coating. We really don't want to have a whole lot of breading around the vegetable. We really want to have a nice little light crunchy coating that's really a carrier for other flavors. I think Irene's probably going to be having some sweet soy sauce with this this afternoon. I think that goes well with tempura squash. A little bit more. What I'm looking for is a consistency about like heavy cream. That is looking good. I'm going to get all the, I'm not going to try to get all the lumps out. I'm going to just get the large ones out. The small ones will take care of themselves when they're cooking. So you don't have to obsess about that. I'm going to put a bunch of the squash in. I'm going to use some chopsticks to deal with the hot oil and the tempura vegetables. How do you tell if the oil's hot enough? Well, there's a couple of ways. One is you can use a candy thermometer or other thermometer that will tell you the temperature. The other is take a piece of squash, put it in and see if it starts to bubble up a little bit. And that one is, so probably about time to start putting the tempura in the frying pan. Now you'll notice I'm using chopsticks. And that's not an affectation. I'm not trying to put on airs. The reason for it is pretty simple. 
wood doesn't conduct heat very well. And it means that I'm not going to be getting my hands hot. I'm not likely to burn myself unless I drop something in the hot oil. Now my manual dexterity with chopsticks is sometimes good, sometimes not good because of some nerve damage that I had. But we'll see how it goes today. It's not quite hot enough yet. A few moments later. While I'm waiting for the oil to get up to temperature, I have a plate with some paper towels on top. There's not going to be a lot of oil on this tempura, but I want to drain off what does come off. I spent a little bit of time in Japan and there's a game that they used to play with this with us gaijin that have some ping pong balls and give you a pair of chopsticks and they'd race you to see who could pick up all their ping pong balls and drop them into a container. Obviously the people from Japan did a much better job than us foreigners. All right. It only takes a few minutes for the tempura to fry. My objective is to have a golden color brown, maybe even just short of golden color. I want the tempura batter itself to be cooked, but I don't want the squash to be mushy. A little patience goes a long way when making tempura. I think it's time to turn them now. I get the second round of squash ready to go. And if you do any oriental cooking, you'll know what this is. This is a spider. It's a tool that's useful to take hot things out of hot pots. Well, in this case, to bring it out of, a, out of some very hot oil. Now, what kind of oil should you use? I'm using a combination of lard and coconut oil. You could use straight coconut oil, you could use straight lard, you could use avocado oil. If you don't have problems with canola, you can use canola. Really what you want is a mostly light flavorless oil. I'm just going to pat these off, put them on another plate, and I'll serve them up for Irene. Hey Irene, Mommy. your tempura is ready. Mm. Sweet soy sauce, it says for rice, but it's for anything you want to dip into it. Patty pan just doesn't get mushy anywhere near as fast as the other ones do. But the meatier squash and the varieties we're growing are not seeded. I mean, you can you can mess up and miss one for quite a while, and they're still not seeded, which I really love. I'm not big on tough seeds. I don't mind seeds and watermelon. I can spit those out. <laughs> Well, thank you for making tempura for lunch. That was an awesome treat. Thanks very much for watching. It's easy to make tempura stuff, tempura vegetables. 
and I find using tempura squash to be a really great way to get more use out of your squash other right. than just stir frying it or boiling it. Right. There's a lot of other things you can do with it. And you know, I think I'll do another show about making a squash frittata. I think that'd be a good idea. And one of the other things that we eat a lot in the summertime is a, is, we call them squash noodles. It's just a way of preparing the summer squash, the uh, the, ra the regular zucchini and uh, yellow squash. And it's so good. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, you can temper all different kinds of vegetables. It's easy. If you want to do carrots, you can do carrots. The trick with all of these things is to not have them be too thick or too big. You can temper or fry an entire green bean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It works just fine. You just have to be prepared for it to have some tooth to that green bean. Yeah, in other words, it's not going to be mushy. It's going to have that crispness still. We, but we also, once in a while, will do shrimp or something like that. You we can like, also do, you can also do tofu. I mean, there's lots of different things you could do. We like tempura. Mm-hmm. We do. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the, hit the bell for notifications because we're going to be doing more, and I'm definitely going to be doing some more cooking videos because we have a lot of vegetables coming on. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm harvesting a rather scary quantity of vegetables every morning. And you know, I could really use somebody to help me eat some cucumbers because. Oh, yeah. She overplanted a little bit of cucumbers. I think I he planted think, like a tenth of the number of cucumbers this year. He hasn't been eating as much. I've been eating cucumbers until they're no, they're not until He's fibbing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll talk with you later. Bye. Bye. And there you have it. <laughs> Careful, you get stuck to my stickiness. Mwah. One can only hope. Uh, hot and sticky, hot and sticky. have some more tempura to eat here. She'll eat more. <laughs>